Let's pray and we'll talk a little bit and it'll be a little different service than normal. And for everybody at North, we thank you guys. So Lord, we just thank you for uh, moms and uh, I, we don't know how to describe them and I don't know that I'll be able to do it justice, Lord God, but I want to bring your word forth and let it do its handiwork through the power of your Holy Spirit. And uh, um, we just pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, so I want to read something real quick, and, and this, this is just going to kind of be like uh, basically set up for mothers and, and honoring them, and um, we're going to go way over the top on it because we just don't do that enough. I think there's three important days, Mrs. Geeson, in the church calendar as Christians, and obviously they're Christmas and Easter and Mother's Day. There's, there's no question that Mother's Day is a is so important in in our church and i'm sure it is in the churches across the country um let's be honest without mothers we couldn't do it amen here's the way i described it in the in the deacons and pastors meeting this morning i said you know even guys when they go on the guys retreat you know we kind of do the the guy thing where you eat nothing but beef jerky and hot pockets and drink soda and everything and and, but guys, after a couple of days, they're ready to get back with their wives where they're required to shower and clean up a little bit. So the, the mothers keep the standard um, forever, pretty much forever. Because uh, if it was a guy's world, it would be pretty crazy, wouldn't it? Um, just say amen and I'll move on. So I got this from the Missouri Right to Life and... Uh, and uh, Terry Lupke gave me this, and uh, they're doing a great job along with the other pro-life organizations in Missouri. And it crossed the land, but surely here in Missouri, I believe that we'll become the first uh, abortion-free state. We're one clinic away from having an abortion-free state. <clears throat> and, it's, and, it's, and it's real close, and I believe that. I believe it's going to happen in my lifetime. Um, and it's just because there's a lot of great moms that are standing up there and speaking for kids, speaking for... Um, they send this out. It says, uh, for a few minutes, close your eyes and think about the earliest memory of mom. Maybe it was carrying you and your sibling to the barn in the early hours of the morning so the milking could get done because she didn't want to leave you alone in the house. Maybe it was the way she rocked you and sang you and smoothed your hair around your ears when you were sick and needy of care. And, and as I'm going through these things, and if they ring your bell, you can just say Amen. Remember other times as you grew, maybe you remember how busy she was raising three or more little kids and how tired she was at the end of a long day, maybe because she had to go to work to support the family in addition to caring for you and your siblings. Maybe you remember how freaked out she was that you didn't get home when she expected you to. Moms stay up, don't they? I said, moms stay up, don't they? Yeah. Moms still stay up to this day. Yeah. You know what keeps moms up at night? You guys. Because you mean a lot to moms. And praise God for it. Um, it wasn't until years later that you finally understood that it was because she loved you so much. Maybe you remember the... What a great grandmother she was and is to your children always stepping in to help you with babysitting advice and house cleaning and maybe other things. Remember all that your mothers did maybe is still doing for you. Maybe you're now doing for your children and your grandchildren. Thank God for all the moms in our lives. Thank God for all the mothers, grandmothers, wives, mother-in-laws, aunts, sisters, friends, and women who love with a mother's heart. Can we get a witness today? Hallelujah. <laughs> I remember, uh, Abe Lincoln says, I remember my mother's prayers and they always have followed me and they have clung to me all my life. Turn with me into Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. And yes, you cannot do a Mother's Day message without putting Proverbs 31 in there. It's illegal in all the states of the union. But after I do the Proverbs 31 uh, preaching, let this get on you and, and let the moms embrace it and enjoy it. And, and, and then after that, we're going to kind of turn as mothers and, and kind of look at uh, Jesus through the eyes of a mom. And, 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 and I think you'll find out that you're, you're not much different than, than Mary is and was with the way she raised her son Jesus. 
And sometimes we don't think about that. But Solomon starts off, and I think he, he's able to write this, starting in verse 10 after his mom writes the first nine verses and, and tells him how to act and how, what kind of women to choose. He comes back and, and says, Proverbs 31.10, an excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. So that means he'll have all the things he needs to do to succeed. And behind every successful man, there's always a successful woman that's able to push him up front. And that's, that's just, that's just in, 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 in prayers and in, in laundry and in, in lunch and dinners and in, in all this kind of thing. And she sets all that stuff up so you can be successful in your workaday world and, and you'll be known at the city gates. Um, and it, it reminds me not only of my mom, but it also reminds me of my wife, how, how wonderful she is. And uh, I'm always able to go into my closet and, and my clothes will be there and, and things will look right. And, and she'll always, she'll always be, be like my second mom and my wife at the same time. She takes on a dual role because she wants to make sure that I don't leave the house, quote unquote, looking like that. Oh, or maybe it comes, maybe your mom did it like this with you. Oh, you're not going out of the house looking like that. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Don't go out of the house looking like that. And surely if you have a teenage daughter, can I talk to you for a second? Or you were a teenager at one time. Your mom for sure told you, Missy, and she used the word Missy. You're not going out of the house looking like that. Amen? As the girls threw them clothes out the window so you could pick them up when you... Go ahead and one more clap and then we'll move on. Bang! Stop! And when did the go-go boots come in style? I was just wondering. What went through the minds of moms raising children my age when the girls were zipping up the go-go boots or whatever outfit was at that time. Verse 12 says, she does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands and she is always up at night making sure you got the stuff you need the next day. Because some of you guys are last minute people just like I was when I was going through school, the world's worst student. Of course you had a month to get that project done. But I need some blue construction paper now. And the only thing in the world that was open back then was Walgreens. So she will gladly go there, get the construction paper, cut out all the things in the magazine and have them sitting there in the morning so you can glue them on while you eat your cereal. Yeah. And can I tell you about the uniform? It's got to be washed, and we found out about it at midnight. And that's just for the girls. For the boys, that doesn't count. The boys can wear the soccer uniform again. <laughs> Come on, guys. That's not an issue. You've played in it, you've sweated in it, you pulled it out of your hockey bag or whatever, and then your mom found out when she came and watched you on the field. Oh my gosh, I didn't wash that, and he's wearing it again. Oh, please don't come by us. And can I tell you, I've told you this for years, your mom is the only one who can drive a three on the tree and groom you while she's driving. Amen. Hey, hold on. For, no wet wipes back then, Mrs. Geeson. You go, well, what did you guys use before wet wipes? Oh, buddy. Just like a lion could tame her cubs. She could... It starts with, everybody do this. Moms, you know, it starts with it, and then she's going to stick her tongue out. 
and she's going to wipe the cheek, I'll guarantee it. Get, oh, you get over here, get over here. And you're like, ah. Oh. Not only was it like a handy wipe, but it could be used as hairspray as well for a pic. Help me out, somebody say amen. amen. We're, going to get, we're going to get pictures taken and we're going to slick your hair back. How are we going to do that? Just... We're going we're gonna to slick it back. And me and my brother weren't twins. We're 15 months apart, but we always had shirts that looked alike. And that's the way she would dress you for the pictures. And here's the deal. It didn't matter if they fit. You, st- you still put them on. Mom, this thing's three sizes too big. Tuck it in. You could, if you was a boy, you tucked it all in. And it didn't matter the hand-me-down pants that you're wearing. You could cinch that up with a belt. And then cuff the legs up, Mrs. Geeson. Talk about low self-esteem. Oh, my. Yeah, you'll get designer jeans one day. But it won't be in my lifetime, mister. Amen. We're just, we're going to have a little fun and, and be truthful about it. Can I keep reading? Well, she raises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it with fruit of her hands and she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. Say strong. Oh, far stronger than any power lifter. You go, well, what do you mean? She has built-in steel in her arm. It's an angle iron. And she can hold a baby on the hip all day long there if need be. You've seen them in the driver's license office like that. You could be there for hours. You're a dude. And you'd stand there for hours and just sweat. And she could be there. And you go, how does she hold her that long? Let me show you. She goes like this. <laughs> it didn't matter her size. She could place the baby right there and it's locked in forever. And a dude would try to hold that baby that long and forget about the dirty diaper. If it's a dirty diaper, he gets long-armed. Here you go, Junior, back to you. And make sure that the diapers are cleaned back. When we was kids, and I told you, they used to, you could boil diapers in that pot and fix spaghetti in it by the end of the night. Oh, quit. We was the kids that drank from the garden hose and rode with no seat belts. It was like a vacation on the back of the 55 Chevy back there. She'd hit the brakes and you'd roll right up front. (laughs) Hello. Or if you were blessed to ride up front, you didn't need a seat belt because mom's arm was made out of steel. Well, it's just like that. She could hold anything back. Put your arm out like, hold on. Can I tell you about the station wagon? Oh, my gosh, no wonder they don't sell them things anymore. You get brain damage back there when Dad rolled the window down. Whoa, all the exhaust running in. Am I reaching anybody today? He go, well, what? You have nine families in that thing. Didn't you smell exhaust? Oh, that was part of the ride. You as high as a Georgia pine when you got to grandma's house. Yeehaw! Yeah, man, things were a little different back then is all I was trying to say. But whether it was then or 2,000 years ago, moms were still moms. And in, in, in that... She dresses herself with strength and her arms are strong. She perceives merchandise and is, and is profitable and her lamp doesn't go out at night. And, and, and I want to talk to somebody who remembers that the, the moms used to go to the store and they, they used to get a pattern and they'd make dresses out of a pattern. <laughs> just they'd be there sewing all night long, nature boy, just sewing a darn in a sock and putting patches on the tough skins because you had two pairs, red and green. It didn't matter what patch went on. Everybody knew they was patched. <laughs> Hello. And everybody wore kids' tennis shoes. There was two kinds, yep. inexpensive and inexpensive. Yep. 
the $3 pair or the $6 pair? Remember that toe? You could write anything on that joke. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for at her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. Can I tell you about the snowstorm? Oh, it didn't matter about the snowstorm as long as you had colonial bread bags. Everybody wore them. Didn't that cut the circulation off of your feet? Yeah, that's how you stayed from not getting cold. You couldn't feel anything down there from the calf below. <laughs> what was that for? It was for holding the colonial bread bags up. <laughs> Didn't you guys have snow boots? Those was the snow boots. Right. And you put socks on your head. I'm at the wrong church. You guys don't remember this. Oh, you got gloves, mister. They come out of the sock drawer. Don't you remember? They were tube socks. Tube socks that go over the knee. They double as a pair of pants. Oh, some of the mothers here are really, oh, we're never going to raise our kids like that. Let me tell you something. After about a kid or two, you'll forget about wiping the na-na off. You go, stick it in his mouth. He's fine. (laughs) Yeah, you're going to sanitize it, all right. You're going to lick it off there. We're on child number four. They're all living. (laughs) Am I at the right church here for a second? Don't give me this stuff. (laughs) Now we have changing stations. (laughs) Amen. Uh, What what I'm trying to tell you is is whether a mommy now or you was 50 years ago or still am or whatever. Moms are still the same and Jesus' mom was still the same and still had the same concerns. It's still kind of funny. And can I, before I move on, and I, and I would just, and, and the moms have been so good through the years and the raising you and you came out right and sure you was, you know, and we, we went to different people's houses and you left your bike in the front yard and you went there because the Kool-Aid was sweeter than what your mom was serving. And it, all, it was always served out of a Tupperware pitcher that was stained beyond belief that could survive any war. I'm, I'm, talking, I'm talking stained where you don't even know what's in it, but you give me a glass. Just get, you didn't care what it was. You've been outside all day. And you know the glass they'd give you? It was one of them Tupperware glasses. They'd either be red, yellow, or green. Say 70s real quick. And it also doubled as a teething ring too. Let Johnny tease on it. You get a sharp edge out of that, man. You could cut steak with that thing, by the way, Johnny. Amen. But they were, that's how they did mommy work back then. And maybe they do it a little different here, but there's DNA still in a mom. So all the you young girls that are out there today and you're confused and maybe you're fretting a little bit, how am I going to raise this baby? Everything that you need to know about your baby and how to raise it was deposited inside of you when God... Amen. You, you won't have it. You, you don't have to tell a mommy how to raise a child. God dropped it. He deposited that DNA in that mommy so she would know exactly how to take care of that baby when the baby cried. And he knows that she's going to know what's going on in the other room in there. Can I tell you about the two sets of eyes that mom's got? Oh, you, oh, you better not be in there, mister. Don't, clo- don't you dare close the door when you have a lady in the house. And you say, how did mom know that? That's, just, that's a sense that mom knows that. It's the same sense when she's dressing the child to go to church. She knows deep back in the back of her mind is, is, is nice as she dresses up little junior and it's raining outside. You know. Her and her little sissy might walk around that water puddle and that mud puddle, but she knows in the back of her mind she's got to watch the, the boy. It's like a magnet to steel. He's going to step in the middle of that thing, but you still dress him in the best because you're moms. 
Amen. Amen. She opens her mouth, verse 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Let me tell you something about wisdom. That is something that God has blessed moms to have. You may have a head full of knowledge. There's a, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom, mister. Knowledge just means you know a lot of stuff. Wisdom is making good choices for your children and your husband day after day after day after day. Amen. And she knows what's best for the kids. And sometimes mother-in-laws don't, well, I won't get on that. <laughs> sometimes mother-in-laws need to back out a little bit because God gave that DNA to that mama to raise those kids. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue and she looks well at the ways of her house and she does not eat the bread of idleness. And you know that you got moms that have stayed up all night long making sure that you had that outfit or that, or that, or that assignment done or whatever it is. She stayed up all night long and maybe even nights that you didn't even know about. And I won't even get into the times that you didn't come home when you should have. She was up praying for you the whole night. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is in vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Can we praise the women of the church today and honor them? Hallelujah. <laughs> Mother's Day. Say it one more time. Happy Mother's Day. And now we're going to look at it from, uh, from the viewpoint of Mary. So she has the, and it just, I just thought we'd do this and, um, and you can rise up with me. This is only going to take about five minutes. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And, and, and some of you guys, let me help you out here. Some of you mothers, Mother's Day may bring heartache and hardship. And, 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 and I remember when and I lost. And, 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 and it reminds you of just maybe bad days. So hopefully we can change that today. I remember that as Mother's Day uh, is the day of... Uh, my daughter was in a tragic car accident and two days later died. So Mother's Day isn't bring us great memories. And that's, that's a heck of a present. Your eight-year-old makes you a picture and dies two days later. But you know something? God's still good. He's still good. And, uh, and that's just something that we have to carry. And uh, we do it by the grace of God. So uh, I want to encourage you today to draw a little strength from Mary as she gives you her depiction on, on, on this. In the sixth month, uh, angel Gabriel was sent to God into the city of uh, Galilee to a, named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph in the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. So the angel comes and said, hey, you're going to be pregnant. And when you guys find out that you're pregnant, now we have pink parties and blue parties and they blow things up or you poke a pen and the confetti falls out and then you paint your room and all. She didn't have all that, but she's still a mom just like you are. Right. And didn't have the didn't have the baby monitors and the phone monitors and the, and the young mom's got to run to the crib every time the baby takes a... <gasps> But she's still a mom. And I'll invite the praise team up as we fast forward into, so here's the birth of Christ, and it's in, 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 in the birth of Christ is in chapter 2, verse 6. And while they were there, the time came to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, firstborn son wrapped him in swallowing clothes, and laid him in a manger. And, she, and maybe she didn't have the, the Welch baby bed in the, in the car seat, and the car seat inside the thing, and the thing inside this, and it clicks into that, and the baby thing, and all this kind of stuff. And, but she's still a mom. And I remember when I was growing up, my mom was telling me, you know, we all thought we had it rough when we were growing up in this. And my mom said that when she was growing up, they kept her in a drawer. They slept her in a drawer of a dresser. Some, some young people can't even get their heads wrapped around this. But her mommy loved her just as much as your mommy loves you. And sometimes today, sometimes the life isn't all roses and and, and, and it's all this and that. Sometimes life's even a little messy. But you're still moms. And God still loves you and still loves your baby. Amen? 
and you guys can go ahead and start playing back there. So we're going to fast forward into Luke 2.41, and, and, uh, and this is the story where they're going to Jerusalem every year for the Passover, and uh, they end up finding out that they leave Jesus behind. Oh, my gosh, where's Jesus? Where's the Messiah? We left him. Where's he at? He's in church. We left him in church, and they didn't find him for three days. And sometimes you feel guilty. You might be walking out of church and go, oh, my gosh, we forgot to get the kids out of Sunday school. Ashley, is our child still back there? Still mom's just like her, right? Amen? Not much different in the, in, in the DNA of a mommy anywhere you look. They're pretty much the same everywhere. They still have the same concern. And their concerns are their children and their husband and the welfare of that family. I thank God for them, man. And we keep fast forwarding and she tries to intervene in Jesus' life just like you do in your kid's life, even though they're... 30 or whatever, and you're like, you know what you need to do? And, you know, and, and your kids are looking at you like, you know what? I'm 35 now. Or in his case, 30 or whatever it was, 30. And they're at the wedding in, in Canaan. And she says, when the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, we have no wine. We're out of wine. We're out of bread. We're out of whatever. And, she, and Jesus said to her, he says, woman, he says, what does that have to do with me? I mean, and, and woman there is, is not a, a belittling term. It's where he says, madam. That's what, that's what that means. It means madam. He said, my hour has not yet come. He says, he said, <clears throat> my will is not to do your work anymore, mommy. My will is to do God's work, my, for my father's work. I'm going to talk to somebody that needs to let their kids go a little bit. In order for you to develop your DNA, sometimes you have to let your kids go and, and, and let that process go into, and, and go into and start into fruition. You go, well, we could chase him around and make sure he doesn't hurt himself. And, and if we get this and we get that and we, we wrap him with bubble tape, maybe he'll never hurt himself. Yeah, but if you do that, he'll never experience life. Come on. So she's no different than you are. And then at the cross, Mrs. Geeson, she gets to see her son pay the ultimate price. And maybe this is your woe today. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister. Can you imagine seeing your son paying the penalty for everyone else's screw-ups. And she's crying and carrying on, just like you are if you've lost a child. And maybe, maybe with you and your child, whatever, maybe that story didn't, maybe it didn't start out great or whatever. Maybe there's been some bumps in the road and some rocks in the road. But that ain't how the story ends. She finally runs to the cave three days later and finds out that her son conquered death just like he said he would. Oh, mom, I want to talk to you today. Oh, God. Maybe your life didn't start out that way. Maybe your life was kind of like mine and you just you didn't know how it was going to start. I remember it my pastor's ordination and my dad after they ordained me my dad came up and, and put his hand on my shoulder and he said your mom would be so proud of you right now see my life didn't start out like that but that's where it is now and God's done a magnificent work in my life Amen. and I want to thank God for that So the child that you've carried, mom, or that troubled child or the prodigal one that's out there sowing his oats or doesn't want to come to church, here's the deal. We got him here today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And here's where the Holy Ghost sticks it on him. Young person that 
your grandma got you to come here today? Young person that your mom got you to come here today, have you ever accepted the free gift of salvation that only Jesus Christ can give? She carried you for nine months. She, she got you through school and everything, but she here's the one thing a mom can't do. They can't save their children. Mm -mm -mm. But the prayers of a mom are powerful. Oh, and God hears your prayers, mom. Woo, Lord, he hears. So let's pray for him and pray him in the kingdom today. So, Lord, everybody that you have brought today, I know there is no, oh, Jesus, today. I know there is, there's one prayer that every mom wants more than anything is for their children to live forever in the kingdom of God. Amen. And if you've never accepted the free gift of salvation, my young friend, or maybe even a grandma, that you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior today and live forever. And we pray this in thy name of Jesus today. Amen.